Hello, this is Salvatore Vinciguerra. Welcome to the Museum of the Cherokee Indian in Cherokee, North Carolina. If you're visiting either the Great Smoky Mountain National Park or Cherokee, North Carolina, this is a great museum to learn about the history of the Native Americans that lived in this region of the United States. Before entering the museum, please take your time and check out this beautiful wood carving sculpture of Sequoia. This statue honors the Cherokee genius who invented the Cherokee alphabet. It was sculpted from a single giant California sequoia redwood log, which was donated and shipped by Georgia Pacific. The sculptor of this beautiful piece of artwork is Peter Wolf Toth, and uh, he sculpted about 63 statues across the United States and Canada commemorating the contributions of Native Americans. Inside of the museum is an experience that spans over 13,000 years of Cherokee history, from the time when the Mastodons roamed the Southern Appalachians to present day. The Cherokee people have told their stories for many generations, using an oral tradition passing them from one person to another. These stories tell important lessons about how to live in the world as a Cherokee person. Stories also preserve history, entertain people on long winter evenings, explain how things came to be, and recount marvelous and supernatural happenings. Characters from Cherokee stories appear in dances, masks, pottery designs, and carvings. Cherokee elders say they have lived in the Southern Appalachians forever, that the Creator placed them here and gave them their language and customs. Artifacts show continual occupation for more than 13,000 years in this particular area. And during the last ice age, people hunted megafauna with spears, killing mastodons for food. They also gathered wild plants, nuts, and berries, which made up about 75% of their diet. Small groups traveled throughout the mountains on seasonal rounds. Only their stone tools remained. Beginning about 10,000 years ago, people developed more sophisticated tools and weapons, which included the atlatl for hunting and weighted nets for fishing. Megafauna such as the mastodon and woolly mammoth became extinct, and smaller animals like the white-tailed deer became an important source for food. Fluted paleopoints changed to atlopoints with stems and barbs. Another tool used during the archaic period was the groove stone axe, and it made it easier for the Native Americans to cut down trees and then use it to also make dugout canoes. Fire was also used to soften the interior of the felled tree, and then stone axes and axes were used to remove the softened wood. Around 1000 BC, people began living in towns year-round. They developed pottery that was impressed with designs and used for cooking. They continued to use the atlo, but began also using blowguns along with bows and arrows. Stone pipes were carved for use in ceremonies where the smoke carried prayers to the Creator. Here is one of the more fascinating artifacts found at the museum, and it's this particular piece that is inscribed, and they don't know exactly what it means. Is this the Cherokee language? Is it Hebrew? Is it something else? And they ask people to look at it and describe, well, is this a hoax or is this something else that people can figure out? 900 AD to 1500 AD is considered to be the Mississippian period. During this time, people developed a new variety of corn called Eastern Flint, which closely resembles modern corn. It was grown with beans and squash, known as the Three Sisters, in the fields surrounded by gourd birdhouses hung on poles. These provided homes for purple martins, birds who eat destructive insects and keep crows and blackbirds away from the corn. The increased food supply provided leisure time, which people used to build mounds, refine arts and crafts, and create new art forms like shell gorgets, and celebrate religious ceremonies. At the Green Corn Ceremony, families, clans, and tribes came together for prayers, dances, marriages, and reconciliations. The ceremony is still celebrated today. 
the Cherokees were contacted by the European DeSoto expedition in 1540. Between 1500 and 1650, more than 90% of American Indian people were killed by European diseases. Between 1789 and 1839, the Cherokee Nation became civilized by European standards. They developed a system of writing and printing. Their government had a written constitution and operated with executive, legislative, and judicial branches. At New Echota, Georgia, they built a modern capital. Cherokee men were farmers, blacksmiths, ferry operators, traders, diplomats, and writers, as well as hunters and warriors. Cherokee women were gardeners, potters, weavers, basket makers, and more. Schools operated by missionaries taught Cherokee children to read and write English. About 10% of the nation became Christian, while others maintained their traditional religion and ceremonies. In 1838, the Cherokee people were forced to move from their homeland and relocated to Indian Territory, which is now known as Oklahoma. They registered their removal by creating their own newspaper, the Cherokee Phoenix, as a platform for their views. They sent their educated young men on speaking tours throughout the United States. They lobbied Congress and created a petition with more than 15,000 Cherokee signatures against their removal. They took their case to the United States Supreme Court, which ruled that they were a sovereign nation in Worcester versus Georgia in 1832. President Andrew Jackson ignored the Supreme Court decision, enforced his Indian Removal Act of 1830, and pushed through the Treaty of New Echota. In 1838, the Cherokee people were forcibly taken from their homes, incarcerated in stockades, forced to walk more than a thousand miles, and removed to Indian Territory, which is now known as Oklahoma. More than 4,000 died, and many are buried in unmarked graves along the trail where they cried, which is the Trail of Tears. Today, the Cherokee people remained on part of their original homeland in the Southern Appalachians. About a thousand Cherokee people stayed after the removal. From 1839 to 1889, they worked and bought back their own land. In 1868, the federal government recognized them and the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma. In 1889, North Carolina gave them legal status as a corporation. From 1893 through 1948, Cherokee children were forced to attend boarding schools. In 1930, Eastern Cherokees officially became United States citizens. In 1997, the Cherokees began buying back sacred sites, including the Katua Mound and Mother Town Site, Cowie Mound and Hall Mountain Forest, and most recently, the Talarua Mound. About 15,000 people are now members of the Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians. About 9,000 of them live on tribal land, about 60,000 acres in Jackson, Swain, Graham, Macon, and Cherokee counties. They operate their own schools, police, and justice departments, hospital, and health services. The museum has several traveling exhibits that occur throughout the year. This exhibit here, I believe, is permanent, where they display the pottery and artwork of the Native Americans of the Cherokee Nation. On the day that I visited the museum, there was a local artist who displayed his artwork and was also working on different pieces of his art in the lobby of the museum. And I just thought it was very nice because it brings everything, especially this last exhibit and these various creations of pottery, together when you get to see and meet one of the local artists from the Cherokee Nation. In the same day, I would also recommend visiting the Okanalofti Indian Village. It's about a quarter of a mile away from this particular museum, and it would give you a better perspective, a more living history of the Native Americans in the Cherokee Nation and how they lived. And at that particular site, there are artisans everywhere throughout that particular tour and some of the people that work there are descendants of the people who actually have the pottery in this particular museum so it's a very unique experience the museum of the cherokee indian is open daily from nine to five and sometimes their hours change so make sure that you're looking at the website and calling ahead of time to make sure that they're open at the time that you would like to visit
This is Salvatore Vincent Guerra. Thank you for watching this video on the Museum of the Cherokee Indian in Cherokee, North Carolina. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to this channel, and have a great day. Thank you.